Hey guys, we're here at another Devil May Cry 5 achievement guide for you. We're going to be going for Secrets Exposed, which has cleared all secret missions. Now I'll be going through and showing you where they're located and how to beat them all. First one is a stuff kind of explanatory one in Mission 2. It shows you right there at the beginning, so I don't really feel like going into depth as to show you where, because it kind of gives you a little tutorial about them. So it's a pretty easy one. Obviously, it's going to be pretty doable. It's just the first one. It's going to basically be kill all the demons and set them on time. Now, you can do this many, many ways. Just make sure you kill them fast enough. There's no real set thing about this. Obviously, you're not going to have any upgrades or anything special about your character at this point. So just go ahead and kill them all. If you feel like you can't do it fast enough, you can always put on easy difficulty. Make it a little bit more doable. At that being said, you can also come back at the end of the game. and You know, once you've unlocked it, you come back and try it again. Uh, more upgrades, make it a little bit easier if you thought it was too tough. Other than that, I have no real recommendations. I do, uh, I guess you can use the grappling a lot. That'll definitely save you a lot of time to pull them towards you. Other than that, just hack and slash your way through it. Maybe you want to use exceed a little bit to actually do a little bit more damage to make sure you actually ramp that up. If you have that ability where you can actually press LT while hitting them, it's a pretty good one. Uh, you can use your, your Devil Breakers if you have a good one. Uh, like the Shock one, I can't think what it's called, but there's some good ones that really do some area damage. Mega Man Blast is obviously a pretty good one to do too as well. Other than that, just kill them all at the set time. Shouldn't take you too long. We're moving on to the next one. Alright, the next one's located in Mission 3. You'll be coming down this tunnel. I'll give you a little bit of area to see where I'm at here. This is where you're going to be going to progress. And you'll be going up. But I'm going to go down. Let's go ahead and jump down the stairs. And just look right here in front of you. And you'll see this, uh... I don't know, supper passageway with a grate in front of it. A dead end, and you'll be able to see the little mark in the ground and look up behind you to where you're supposed to be going, and you will see the symbol. Just make sure you kind of line up right. I had a little bit of problems here. You're just going to want to look up and stand on that just right. And we'll be doing Secret Mission 2. Alright, so this is Don't Let Any of the Red Ones Escape. The Red Impusas. This one's not too bad either. You don't really need anything special. Just, uh, I would recommend you, you know, grab them. So it'd pull you to them and make that a little bit faster. Now, if you have a Devil Breaker, like, Punch Line's also a pretty good one to have. Because if you press B, it sits there and spams an attack to punch them continuously. While well, you can also weld them yourself. Obviously, if you get your, your powers up a little bit, you can use that as well. Use your Exceed if you have that upgraded at all. Uh, other than that, use forward Y to lunge at them to close that distance as well and you can do some combos if you want or you can just continue to press Y Y Y Y Y I ended up coming back and doing this later in the game so I did have my Devil Bringer unlocked as well so that definitely helps out so you may not be able to do it without that as easily or if you have some other easier method that's what I just used at the last minute there is Devil Bringer other than that that one's pretty simple as well Moving on to the next one, we are in mission four. Be playing as V. So I'm gonna backtrack here and show you a little bit about where this is at. This is probably one of the uh, trickiest ones in the game to find. It takes a little bit of trekking to get to it. So. Out here, there's multiple ways to go through alleyways and whatnot. I'm going to backtrack all the way and show you from the beginning where it was at. Because I was walking around exploring and I found it. And then I just started recording from that point on and to backtrack out to where I was. Like I said, this is probably one of the trickiest ones to find. Considering that it's off the off-beaten path. Most of them are pretty doable to find. So, first off... You're going to want to grab some of them hatchlings. You will definitely need some of those. I went through this building because you're not going to be able to get it any other way. You just go through this building. You have to summon your nightmare and break open that building. You'll find hatchlings around the area here. There's one right here. You see that goo on the floor. You're going to need one there. 
jump over this wall. As you can see here, this is what I'm talking about. You can't come this way unless you go through the building because of that gate. Go through this wall here. You'll be going down this path. Uh, as you'll be using the hatchling at some point. I don't remember where, but that's where one's located at, and you will have to use that one. There's also one before that. I vaguely remember that you need to use one, but it's in your way, so you'll miss that one. So you just keep following this path to where I am. You eventually come down this building. Just jump up top here, and you'll find your secret mission number three. Yep, number three. All right, so once you look down there in the ground, you'll see it. Now this one can be a bit trickier. It is doable from the get-go. I I went left, and as I was going left, I spammed the X button for the Griffin to actually shoot the uh, the bookshelves. So I just spammed all those. There's six over to the left, and then I made my way to the tables. So I just jumped over the tables a lot faster than walking around them. So just jump over them. And all you got left is these double jump ones. So make sure you double jump and try to get these in one go. And then your last one is this double jump. Right here, hop on top of that bookshelf and do a double jump. And sometimes you can hold the A button to fly. You might be able to get them all in one go. If not, you got some time, you can still grab the last one. Other than that, that's pretty doable. It just takes a couple tries probably to do that one. Next one's on mission five. So you'll be coming down this pathway here. This is part of the story. You won't be able to miss this area. Now make sure you uh, save your devil trigger gauge for this wall. If not, there's back there, there are some white orbs to grab. So summon your nightmare on this wall right here. And you see me do it and you'll break through this wall. You have a bit of a fight scene here. Make sure you take everything out, of course. And I could edit this out for you. I decided just to keep it in here, I don't know why. But you'll definitely know when you come down this pathway that you will see what I'm looking at here and enemies so once you break this wall you'll know you're in the right spot pretty sure this is the only one you really gotta go through to actually be able to fight to get to this actual secret mission so I'm, I don't think I have any more fight scenes in here. I apologize for if you want to rush to get to the mission that I kept this in here. So once you take everything out, you will see this little stairway over here. Just climb up to the top of it, and you will look out, and you can kind of already see the pattern on the girders right there. The girders, excuse me. So look out there on the girders, and you'll see it. Mission four. This one also can be a bit of a pain in the ass. If you want, buy the nightmare ability that you can ride on its back. If you ride on its back, you can stand through the entire time, and you don't gotta worry about taking any damage because it'll be attacking the nightmare. And by the time everything is dead, you'll it'll still be alive by the time everything is dead. So I would highly recommend doing it that way. I would just stubborn and want to do it without that, but that would definitely be the recommended method to do. Just make sure you buy that ability to ride the nightmare, and you will have no problem with this at all. If not, make sure you dodge around a lot, summon your nightmare, and you have extra. Devil Trigger, I'd recommend putting it on your your demons to have them a little bit stronger to take everything out. If not, I would just try your best to stay in the corner, kind of lure them to you, you know, and jump out the way. And if you get them in the corner, especially with Nightmare Active, it'll definitely do some area damage on most of them at one time. Other than that, there isn't really any more tips than that. Just kind of do your best to avoid everything. This can take a few tries, especially without that ability to ride the Nightmare. If you have any problems as well, I would read your book if you got the time to, to actually get your Delta Trigger up higher as well, so you can summon Nightmare for maybe a second time if you don't have that ability. 
Now we are jumping all in mission eight. Doing a little bit of mission skipping here. All right, you can see where I'm at here. This is where you come into. I think it's the second lift. Look, these little lava lifts. You want to call them that? It's like the second one you come to. All you gotta do is climb to the top. Now there's two ways you can do this, and I think my way is a lot easier than trying to do the actual shoot those weird grappling things and grab them and then jump up to the ledge, which is to my right. I'm just gonna climb all the way to the top like normal, and I'll show you that here in a second. Over there, where you see the arms. That is the other method you can use to get up there. But I would say this way is a lot easier. Just go like you would go the normal mission. Get the top here. And just jump down the corner. One jump. All you, need, you don't need the Gehara. You don't need a double jump. You can just jump. And if you land just right, you can basically skip over that little wall. And climb on down in here. Turn around and look up. And you will find your next secret mission. Alright, moving on to secret mission number five. This one's not too bad. All you gotta do is make sure you, the first one you can grab, but the rest of them you actually have to shoot before you can grab them. So make sure you shoot them and grab them as soon as you can. As soon as you get close enough after you do a little bit of like a little skip right there, like right over the top of that, make sure you shoot and then press B right away. Now these first ones aren't really that bad. It's like the very, very last one that can really screw you up. These ones move. It's not too bad once you get the timing down for it. But this very, very last one here, when you come to the end, this one right here, you just gotta kinda pull yourself up that way. Make sure you kind of let him angle himself around towards the blue fragment and then jump towards it. Otherwise, you're not gonna land on it and you might miss that jump. Alright, next one's on mission 9. You'll be coming to this open area here where you see me at. With this little building structure. And if you go around here to the left, you will see these vines in the way with also another blue fragment in the background. So make sure you save up some Devil Trigger for this area as well. If not, try to look around for some white orbs. Come back to this area at Summon Nightmare, and you'll be able to break open this area for you. Grab that blue fragment as well, as like an actual little bonus. And you'll find your next mission up top here. Let's jump up top here, the very, very top. Turn around and look down to where you came from, the entrance, and you'll see the next mission. Alright, moving on to mission 6. Now, this one I would recommend if you just go to unlock it. I would save this for one of the last ones you do. I would recommend you see how full my Devil Trigger can be. I would recommend wait until it's that high. That way you can summon your Nightmare and you can put all the extra ones on your demons. Because you don't have very much time to do this. So, you're not going to have much window to actually be able to skim by by just being lucky. So, I would wait till later on and get your Devil Trigger up. Summon all that stuff at once and just go ham on everything as fast as you can, and you should be able to get it. Alright, moving on to mission 10. You come to this room with two of these uh, these doorways that will close on you if you don't kill all the enemies fast enough. So make sure you kill everything in here fast enough. I would recommend having a devil trigger here and being able to summon your devil trigger, maybe even having your devil sin trigger at this point. Either way, it works. Let's make sure you kill everything fast enough so you can go through the doorway. And the doorway you're going to want to choose. If you're facing the way you came in, you're going to want to use the right doorway. Now don't worry about these pictures, this is after you beat the game and get this extra photo mode stuff. So that won't really d delay you too much of getting through the doorway. If you do, you tend to come back and do this later on. Because I ended up missing this one as well. Now I would recommend saving your Devil Trigger for the last few enemies here. You're going to have one of them big ass bugs. Using the King Cerberus weapon is pretty efficient on this. As long as you continue attacking this thing, it shouldn't take too long to kill it. Like I said, King of Cerberus is pretty good. If you get your Dove Trigger back up again, just make sure you just keep using it whenever it's active. You're not able to be activated. It'll definitely help you kill everything a lot faster. 
So once you go in this right room, you're just going to follow this path all the way up here. Yep. Once you get into this room, you already see it in the middle, and you're just going to look right and up a little bit. Or, excuse me, turn all the way around. You're going to look, turn all the way around from where the door where you came from and look up. And you go find Secret Mission 7. Alright, now this one can be a bit tricky. You either use the Balrog, or some weapon that you can do like one hit at a time that's really slow. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to break the guy's scissors. Make sure you break one and wait for him to come back from that recoil. Keep attacking until you break that second one. And you're going to want to wait until you see his face kind of like light up red there. It looks like it turned a little reddish. You're going to want to wait until he comes back from that recoil as well. And then gets kind of down like at you and looks that way you know it's coming back from the stun. And you're going to want to use your Ebony Ivory and you're going to shoot him right in the face. One shot. Alright, moving on to mission 11. You'll be coming to this as part of the progression of the story. And you're going to be doing this exact same thing I'm doing to advance through the level. Now, instead of going down, you're going to go back to where you came from. Hop back up here and you're going to turn around from where the room you just came from, which is now in front of you. And you will see your next secret mission if I can get up here. Stand here in a little corner and look to the right a little bit, and you'll be able to line it up from the wall and the previous wall. Mission 8. Alright, now this one can be a bit tricky as well. And if you have any problems with the auto comboing stuff, you can use that as well. Just hold on the right stick, turn on the auto combo. I ended up trying it out to see how it worked out. What it does is it tends to switch weapons for you by itself. That way it tends to be able to, you know, force you to mix up your combos and different weapons for that matter. It worked out pretty well, I must say. It is kind of odd. I wouldn't recommend using it for the game style, but unless you're kind of used to that thing flying, you know, changing on the fly for you. But, like I said, if you have any problems, just hold the R RS button or you can go to the options menu and change the auto combo on. You can see it beneath your orbs as well there. If not, I would just recommend using whatever you're familiar with and what weapons you, you like the best to combo. Let's make sure you don't get hit, because if you do get hit, they will also avoid your ass ranking. And for some reason, more enemies spawn there as I beat it, which is very odd. Alright, moving on to mission 12. This is also a story progression. You'll be going through and unlocking this and jumping down this hole and filling up these little... I don't know, pool is full of blood, if you want to call it, this little area here. You jump down here. You'll just be, be progressing normally as you would. Before you end up going all the way up top of this and going forward through that tunnel, you're going to want to get to the top here. I go up one more ledge because I couldn't make the jump here. But basically, you're going to hop up to that next ledge. One more up, or maybe even two. Because you could definitely do a double jump, and if you are in the uh, trickster stance, if you double jump and press B in the air, you will do another dash, basically. Which would have helped me immensely at this point. So once you come up here, you will see the glow, and you're just going to turn around and look up a little bit to line it up, and you'll find your next secret mission. Secret mission 9. Now this one's a lot easier than it seems. So what you want to use is the Cavalier. The motorcycle, all you gotta do is double jump in the air and just start pressing the attack button continuously until the time is up. That is all you need to do for this one. You do not need to worry about getting that close to the ground because you will make the time. Alright, moving on to mission number 14. You'll be coming down this pathway as V. And you'll be going down here. And you'll be destroying this vine to progress. And then you might turn around and just completely miss this area like I had before. So make sure you destroy this for the vine. And instead of going that way where you want to go, you're going to want to go this way. Just go basically behind the vine. A few more steps, turn around, look up, and there you are. And your next secret mission, number 10. This one's pretty doable. I ended up doing this one other way and then finding an easy way to do it. 
all you gotta do is summon your nightmare and get that ability to ride the nightmare. And once you summon it, he'll be down here. So once you summon him, you can you can ride him in the air as well. So once you just jump down here in the air, you'll be able to use the button combination to get on him. I think it's forward up B. I'm not quite sure that don't quote me on that. So once you ride him, just ride him all the way to the end where the orb is at, and you'll be done. Like I said, I got this orb before a different way, which was attacking and then flying and hovering in the air. This one's a lot more it's a lot easier. So don't worry about the other method. Alright, we are moving on to mission number fifteen. You'll be progressing through the mission and you will notice the statue to upgrade your guy. So I'm gonna look around here for you. You can see kind of see a better surrounding of it. And you can actually go behind the statue. So once you're behind the statue, all you gotta do is just follow this pathway all the way up there. You can use the Gehera as one method to do it, like I said, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's not as easy as using the punch line. So make sure you just grab the punch line arm and hold the B button and you'll be able to just fly over these walls and all up the top to where you can use your secret mission. It's gonna take me a little bit here to actually get the top because it's gonna I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh all the punch and arms are on the ground, maybe it's a clue to maybe I should use it. All you gotta do is hold the B button to use its ultimate ability for the arm and you'll be able to ride that all up the top. You end up screwing up, no big deal. Obviously there's plenty on the ground for you since you know once you ride the arm it's gonna destroy it. I actually ended up getting over this first wall by double jumping and meleeing, which is pretty funny. I didn't even... At this time, I wasn't even looking at the punch and arms on the ground. I just killed enemies and tried to get to the top. It's going to take me a little while here to actually use the arm. I'm just going to go ahead and kill everything in my way. Because obviously, you know, it's going to be distracting. But you can actually just avoid them if you want. And grab the arm and just ride your way up there. It's, not, it's like you got to actually kill these guys unless you want the points for it. I do end up luring the enemies down here too, which is also pretty funny. They end up seeing me, and I thought, you know, if you could actually grapple to them in this method, you know, and not them to you, that also would have worked, but... Seems like there's also a ledge above my head. You might be able to actually get up top of that ledge and be able to jump to the left little side of here. This little, you know, I don't want you to call it this little pathway here for you to use the punch on arm. See, then I grabbed the arm here. And there you go. All you gotta do is just follow this path up. It'll take you all the way to the top. It might actually end up breaking on you because it doesn't last forever. Maybe mistaken, maybe you just press B to use it and then you just jump to get on it. I think that's what I did. So, once you're at the top here, just go over here to this little spot off to the side and you will see a glow on the floor. Go ahead and stand on it. It's right in front of you. Just look up to the left a little bit and there you go. Secret mission at 11. Alright guys, we are almost done. After this, we only got one more to do. Not too bad if you ask me. Now at this point, you will need the Gehera to make it a little bit easier, so go ahead and purchase the Gehera beforehand. And all you gotta do is just follow this pathway up and use the Gehera to kind of cheat your way. I would skip the one on the left and use the one on the right with the Gehera, otherwise you can't make this jump. All you gotta do is jump your way up here with the Gehera, and you should be able to get up through in no time at all. So you definitely need the Gehera for that one to make it a little bit easier. I end up doing this one last, so I got my achievement early.
We got a mission 16 here. We are the Dante again. So you see this is one of the missions where you'd be jumping down these holes to progress. So once you get down to here, this is the third one you'd be jumping down. I'm pretty sure it's the third hole to jump down here. You get two previous ones beforehand. Make it do the spot and some fights. So once you jump down here to the left hand side, stop here. Look to your right, you'll see that tree over there with orbs on it. Make sure you are in trickster form. Double jump over there and press B to get over there. Just follow the path behind it. Look straight down and jump down here with the health orb and the white orb of Devil Trigger are. Jump down here, turn around, jump down here to this little spot. And you'll see the spot on the floor. Turn around, look up, and there it is. All you gotta do, guys, with Dr. Faust is press B to collect orbs. If you have any problems with it, upgrade them, and you have this done in like three seconds flat. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you liked this video. Hope it helped you out. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll be making more guides for you soon. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.